If you guys are watching this video, you guys are probably excited for the Automatons beta that's coming out tomorrow. I gotta tell you though, I'm more excited than you are. I am so excited in fact, I've gone ahead and made the next update all for myself. Here's what I did. I'm sure you guys remember the original trailer that started off with a man walking through a door and a light turning on automatically. Well, we've got that replicator, at least the, the opening section, but I've got a couple of other things that I'm going to make for you as well. We've got here an oxygen monitoring system with a nice little reading nook, and just over here we've got a, a miner. Uh, one that will, in theory, never overfill. Starting off with the automatic lighting, I'm just going to go run around the back here. So this is a programming block, I know, very, very scary, but we're going to use this in concert with a website called Visual Script Builder that's going to allow us to choose the events we want to monitor, the uh, the responses that we're going to have to those events, and it's going to be more complex than the event controller, so this is going to be helpful going forward, but I'm going to get this sorted. I want the update now. Let's have a look. So this is the Visual Script Builder website. Uh, you can visit it at dco.pe slash VSB. I'll put a link in the description for you, but this is uh, this is basically what you get. You get the create new script, you've got the import script, and you've got a load script here. This will be grayed out for you if you've never used it before. Uh, but, uh, well, once you see how useful this is, I'm sure it'll be full of scripts that you've uh, you've wanted to make. Anyway, Let's go ahead and create a new script. Now this is where we need to start, up here in the corner. Uh, so we need to make sure that we have affect only this grid turned on, because we don't want to affect anything else. And we are also going to allow missing blocks, because if I mess up, I want this to work without me having to go find the, the programming block and getting it all set up. Uh, now the frequency here, the frequency is one of the more important sections. Um, the game operates on a system of ticks. Uh, so it's one tick every game second, I believe. Uh, no, why am I saying that? That's not right. It's uh, it's 60 ticks a second, uh, which is a little quick, um, I guess. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, it allows us some very fine control. Uh, so we can do every tick and it will check something every, every 60th of a second. We can set it to... Uh, to 10 ticks it'll check uh one sixth of a second and this one it will check uh every uh two third uh no one second uh and 20 millisecond i i don't know one and a one and two third seconds basically long short just right there we go uh, we don't need to worry about these at the moment, so we'll ignore that. But for now, let's get into the script creation. Now, I'm going to start here. You can see we've we've got this chunk here. It calls them chunks. Um, and you can see over here on the left, there is an overview of logic chunks. Uh, that will tell you uh, exactly what is happening, um, except for the whole, you know, set this stuff stuff. That's fine. We can ignore that. We want to start, though, with an if. Because uh, we want to know if a door called this door is open. Uh, and we do that by setting door here on block type, this door for the name. And we want to enable that because that's what we're checking for. And we need to set this to true because if it is open, then it will be true. If it's not, it'll be false. Um, and that is the, the opening section of this done. So we need to add a new chunk. Uh, and you'll see here, there is a little section here where it's kind of dented in. That means that this is depending on an outcome from this section at the top. So we are just interested in a lighting block called that light, because that's what they're called on the grid. Makes it easier for you if you set a custom name. Um, and we are going to set enabled to true because we want it turned on when the door is open. And that is the basics of it, but we also want it to do something when it is closed. And we are going to else do. Uh, so basically what it's doing is if this, then this, else this. 
and that is going to be a lighting block called that light and we are going to set enabled to false and that is it that that is the script done basically you hit generate script you copy it all and paste into the game so here we are back at the programming block and you just click on edit you paste it in i already got it in here you click ok and nothing should ha uh, appear on the screen if it comes back to like this everything is working perfectly let's just make sure though let's go find that door so we have a light off we open the door light comes on close the door light goes off close the door light goes on congratulations guys we've made a fridge we've made a fridge <sighs> i really want that update anyway let's switch over now to my reading nook which you can see is precar precar precariously positioned under my oxygen stores um which is fine because this is exactly where i need to be when the oxygen runs out uh, what I want to happen is uh, when I am reading my book, I need this little light here to flash to let me know that I've got a problem and I need to resolve it. I feel like there should be a, a vanilla ice quote there, but uh, I don't want to get copyright strike. Right, so we're back in the visual script builder. We've got the script settings set up already. We only care about the grid that we're on. We're going to allow missing blocks because we want to be able to just ignore this uh, this programming block. And we're going to set the frequency to every 100 ticks because it doesn't need to be very frequent, these checks, um, because I don't see people using oxygen that quickly, quite frankly. Uh, so let's go ahead, get these chunks down. The thing that we are going to be checking, of course, is the oxygen tank. So, if the oxygen tank, uh, let's see, uh, if the value is less than 25%, uh, and it's just using the default name, so we're going to ignore that, uh, uh, we will add a new chunk, and we will do... Uh, let's see, we want to set the lighting block called corner light, corner light, this is a problem with having caps be the, uh, the RP walk, you get being, uh, you get caps all over the place. Anyway, uh, let's get this squared off, uh, so we want to, uh, set the color to red, and we want to set the link interval to one there we go uh, and it will blink every second uh, which is exactly what we want there and if it is normal uh, so we're going to need to add a new chunk after this if uh, if it is over 25% uh let's see uh else do uh lighting block color uh and we're going to set this to a nice color of 255 uh 232 233 uh and then 192 i think is the right color. You know what? Let's uh, let's check because I've got this set up already. I want the exact color. Gosh darn it! Uh, no, nope, we want the corner light. Uh, two, two, three. There we go. Let's go back down here for some continuity. Okay. Uh, two, two, three, one, nine, two. There we go. Uh, nice color if you want to make realistic looking lights. It's actually not that good for corner lights because corner lights are like fluorescent colors. I'm going off track. Uh, let's see. So, uh, blink interval seconds. We'll set that to zero. Um, and that will make the light blink. But we can actually do other things as well. 
So if we add a new chunk here uh, and choose and, um, then it basically does this after this. So it does this and this. So uh, we want to get an air vent uh, and we want to depressurize. Now we're going to do something slightly different here just to show you can do it in different ways. Uh, we've got uh, depressurize on and off here. Now, when the uh, when the oxygen is running low, we want to start depressurizing. So we're going to apply action at that point. Uh, and we're going to do the opposite down here and air vent depressurize off. There we go. Now that should be it, but you can see here script has errors, which I definitely intended on purpose so that you guys would learn. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Uh, this is a learning opportunity, not me making mistakes. Oh, OK, so we've got the scripts running now. So copy script to clipboard. Uh, let's go ahead and get that into the programming block. Uh, let's get over here. Now, I have tried to edit this uh, <laughs> this video a number of times, um, but this is a brand new script, probably the exact screen, exact screen, exact same script, but pasted the new one in. Click OK and no errors here means we know that it's working fine. So we've got a light, we've got a vent, we've got an oxygen tank. Let's simulate the building or ship using up all of the uh, oxygen. We're going to stockpile in there, which means it's going to be draining this one. This is the one we're looking at. This is oxygen tank. And you can see eventually. Yep, the light is flashing and it's red and it is starting to uh, it's starting to draw in air now. Uh, and this one eventually will get full. There we go. It started refilling the oxygen tank, got to 25%. Light came on. So that's the script complete. Wonderful little thing. But how are we going to make something cool with this? Of course, we need the resources to be able to make all of the things that we've got here. So let's make sure that we've got a programmable block script that you can use to make sure that you've got the resources you need without wasting a single rock. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm making this one as a bit of a meme. If you have a look in the description, there's a link to my Discord. The guys in there, you ask them, they know. I keep every single bit of stone that comes my way if I can get away with it. And this is how I am going to do it going forward, I think. Um, let's get the script setting sorted. You've got effect only this grid, allow missing blocks, and we don't need to check very often, so we're going to do every 100 ticks. And we are going to start off with if a single block called uh, of a type large cargo container, uh, we're going to leave that blank because it's fine with it being the normal name. Um, and if it is full, uh, then add a new chunk, do uh, drills, drill, drill, drill. There we go. And we want to do it to all blocks of type. There we go. Uh, all blocks of type drill enabled uh, off. There we go. Uh, we, you can set it there or you can do it over here. Um, I'm going to go with this one uh, just because it's a single click. Uh, and that is basically it. You click generate script and you copy that. Um, and as I say, we've, we've done this previously, uh, but we'll go ahead and put that in there. And that should be fine now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some stone. But we're just going to keep going. But of course, you see, I'm holding the left mouse button right now. That's not what we want to do. We actually want to use that button there, number one. We want to enable it using a button because pressing that action through the script won't actually stop the drills. So we're just going to keep drilling here. Uh, also, I seem to be stuck. Why am I stuck? Ah. 
I always have this trouble with my miners. Always. There we go. I'm a bit less stuck now. And it's off! Just in time. There we go. Let's go ahead and go back and we will check out how much stone we've got. You can see that we're actually already very heavy. Uh, just by how slowly I'm able to accelerate. We're down. Let's check the inventory. Uh, and yes, I did press P. It's okay to press P, guys. Uh, so you can see this is full. The cockpit was starting to fill up. Uh, which means we haven't lost a single bit of stone. Uh, which means we have saved the stones, guys. It's great. You'll love it. But yeah, that was uh, that was me basically making the new update for myself. I am going to be live tomorrow when the update is being announced and hopefully released. And I hope to see you there.